today we're going to be checking out the B1 Lancer, uh, also known as Bone. If you take B and the word one from the B1, you get Bone. Anyways, um, yeah. The the plane is, uh, I, I love the fact they brought the plane into the sim, and it was brought in by Vertavia. But there are a lot of things I don't like about the plane in the sim. Now, I was going to buy it regardless. It is, uh, it's in American dollars, it's like 20 bucks. Uh, but I, I was going to buy it regardless because I'm a big B1 person. I love them about as much as the b2 but the b1 is like by far like it's a, it's a legendary plane i call it um the only problem is the texturing well and actually it's, there's more than one problem but the texturing is god awful we're gonna go take a walk around but yeah the texturing is god awful i mean it is in my personal opinion it's like right there if you look at that eagle up there that is awful looking. It's subpar. That's below subpar, my really, if you think about it. But the sheer size of the plane. So I've seen a B1 in person. There's one actually on display at the Wright Patterson Air Force Museum. Um and the thing is just amazingly massive. I'm actually about ready to go back to the, the uh, Wright Patterson uh area to see the Air Force Museum there. But yeah, the the size is about right. Just just look at the sheer how big those ports are. Those it, it, it's huge. So, but yeah, it, it, the the detailing is it's meh. We're gonna walk underneath. And like you see right there up in the, uh, where the, um, the gears go into. Yeah, that's just awful. You can see the gearing detail is really bad. I mean, to fly, it's, it's fun to fly. I love it. I love to fly it. it but don't get too close or you'll be heavily disappointed. So, yeah, we're going to jump in here. The, uh, I'll show you how to start the engines. It's very simple, but I, I, I just it it's an awe of how massive this thing is. It is a supersonic fighter or a fighter bomber. It's a supersonic bomber, but it's not supersonic in the sim. It is a subsonic aircraft in the sim. I really want them to uh, do updates. I think they've already done updates because I've seen some videos where I believe this down here is called tail. Yeah, it's called a tail hook. Extend, retract, tail hook. But when you look at the actual name right there, it says bay doors. So if we're going to, we're going to open this back up and go back down to walking. And there we are. Some JDAMs. Lots of JDAMs. This thing can hold a lot of weapons, or a lot of bombs, a lot of different types of ordnance as well. Come on, turn, buddy. There you go. Yeah, you have these over here. All right, so we can close those doors. Now, well, let's go ahead and turn on the power. We're going to move over here. This is your battery switch. And as you can see in the cockpit, very low poly, low resolution, just all around not that great. I flipped the power on. All right, power is on. Why are you up? There you go, that one's, okay, that left side, or right side was up for some reason. Um, I thought there was supposed to be an engine sound, or at least some sound. Oh, well. Uh, but at this point, pull back on the throttle. It 
it does have an animation when it comes to starting the engines. So this right, this left side. Okay, I see why that left side's uh, wing is going up. I'm moving my character over, and it's moving that one up too. There it is. So you have the smoke coming out, which is correct. That is actually correct on what uh, the actual animation and or what it does in real life. Only problem is there is no the audio or the sound of the aircraft is all kinds of wrong. It should be like tremendously louder. And I think the sweeping wings, it, it goes too fast. But yeah, I mean, it's, if you just want it for the B1, it's, it's, I, I, I'd say go for it. Is it worth 20 bucks? No, not in a not not ever. Like even inside the cabin, you can't hear the engine. Now out here you can. In that one, in my first person mode, off of a FS realistic, you couldn't hear the engine. Now here you can. But you can't hear it in the cabin, which is very disappointing. All right, let's go ahead and start engine two. And then you're going to have the smoke coming out again. So a little bit of information on the B1. So the B1 is the, has the largest conventional payload of both guided and unguided weapons in the Air Force in, uh, inventory. It's a multi-mission B. Uh, the B1 is a multi-mission platform, uh, and it, it, it's done. It's done its job. Very much has done his job. Um, a little bit of the background. It was developed in the 70s as uh, with four different prototypes. So during its prototype testing, it was able to go to a, a speed of Mach 2.2. Uh, so, and I think right now that's max speed right now uh, is 1.2. Mach 1.2. So another funny thing is that this plane finally made its debut on October in October of 1986 and that is my the crazy thing is I was born in October and I was born in 86 this is my birth plane that's what I'm dubbing it now make fun of me all you want I, I want me calling it that but it, it's just funny all right we're gonna start this Uh, let's see. There's other information in here. So it has operated uh, during um, this during the first six months of operation during freedom. Eight B1s dropped nearly 40 percent of the total tonnage delivered by coalition air forces. That's 39, nearly 3,900 JDAMs, or 67 percent of of the total. That this this plane has been used. And a little bit of information, also a little backstory for me, from me. I saw one uh, in Afghanistan when I was uh, when I was over there in Afghanistan myself when I was in the army. Um, f true, true story. We were taking indirect fire the the camp I was at, and uh, after indirect was done, up in the sky there was a B one really high up there dropping flares as a sign of. Um, uh, a force saying, Hey, we're here. You may want to run. Even though I, I say you shouldn't do that. Just drop them and say, bye. Have a nice day. But, uh, the primary function of this aircraft is long range, multi row heavy bomber. And this was the plane in its day was built by a company known as Rockwell international. Currently known as Boeing. So Boeing is actually technically Okay, Rockwell technically is what uh, is what made the plane, but current day name it's a, it's a Boeing plane. Now it is powered by four four General Electric F one hundred one GE one hundred two turbo fan engines with afterburners. Now these engines are ridiculously powerful, thirty thousand plus pounds with afterburners. Of thrust 
per engine. That's 120,000 pounds of thrust. This thing is powerful. So we're Joint Base Andrew, uh, Joint yeah, Joint Base Andrews and in D outside DC. Actually, if you look at the distance over there, there's Air Force One. This plane's not actually stationed here. It was just one of the airports. I was like, any, meeny, miny, you. Uh, the approximate weight of the plane is 190,000 pounds. That's that's just the plane. Maximum takeoff weight is nearly a half a million pounds. Fuel capacity is 265, over 265,000 pounds, and it can carry up to 75,000 pounds of uh, on its payload. Maximum speed is 900 plus miles an hour. So that's Mach 1.2 at sea level. And its range is intercontinental. And the reason why they say intercontinental is because you have this port on the nose right there where you can actually refuel uh, refuel it in midair. Mid so if you give it some fuel in midair, your extended range is almost infinite. Maximum ceiling, well, its ceiling level it's able to operate is more than 30,000 feet. They uh, obviously probably its maximum altitude is classified, so they are, that's why they say more than 30,000 feet. So this thing has a very wide wide range of armaments. So here's the long list. If you guys are interested, 84, 500 pound Mark 82s or 24, 2000 pound Mark 84 general purpose bombs. So basically this thing can carpet bomb the freaking crap out of anyone. So, and you have up to 84, 500 pound Mark 62s or eight, 2000 pound Mark 65 quick strike naval mines. So this thing can basically drop, essentially what it is, is um, it can mine a field really quick. It, it, it drops, doesn't not essentially bombs, but it's uh, a air to ground mines. So if you don't want to mine a field real fast, just fly over the field. You can just mine a field in seconds. Um, 30 cluster munitions, your CBU 87s, 89s, and 97s. 30 wind correction, a uh, corrected munitions dispensers. You have up to 24, 2000 pounds GBU 31s or 15, 500 pound GBU 38s joint direct attack munitions up to 24 AGM 158 alphas joint air to surface standoff missiles or 15 ABU 54 laser Joint direct attack munitions. This thing has got some armaments it can it can handle. This thing can handle itself. So this plane is operated on a crew of four. You have your aircraft commander, which is your pilot, your co-pilot, and you have two combat system officers. So basically, you have two people in the back of the plane that's monitoring the bombs, arming them, tracking them, making sure they're all right. But in the unit cost of this plane. 317 million per unit inventory uh, for so it says there are 62 active Air National Guard has none Reser Air National Res Air Reserves have zero as well there are two in testing this information is current as of 2016 so yeah that's just a bit of information on the B1 Hope you guys uh, like the little uh, fun fact section, which I'm probably going to start doing that with all my planes I put out now. Oh, uh, I should have done it with a tor tornado. But anyways, but yeah, look at she's not bad if you're looking at the distance. But if you start looking at it, at it uh, closer, <laughs> have fun. And then in here is also really bad. Uh, there is... This, were the commander or the two uh, bomb officers or the uh, ordnance officers or combat systems officers? They all sit back behind here, uh, but that's not all. That's not modeled at all. All right, so let's go ahead and turn on our display. There. So you have different modes. I'm still yet to figure out the autopilot. It's kind of funky. But there we go. Let me get that out of the way. 
So let's go ahead and taxi out to the runway. We're going to put out the wings all the way out for takeoff. Flaps. All right, cool. I do like the afterburners need to be more defined on this thing. They need to be way bigger, bigger flames, because this thing, when it takes off, like uh, when it first takes off, it's it puts out a massive flame. And I, it's it's awesome. I, I really, really want to go to Oshkosh because sometimes the uh i, I want to say it was last year they had a b1 at the oshkosh air show up in uh, wisconsin <clears throat> i would love to go up for that but i'm in ohio and that would probably cost me a ton of money in well right now with inflation that'd be kind of hard to do let's go ahead and take this b1 up in the air <clears throat> the flight model in my opinion is not actually bad uh, it's still fun to plane to fly, even though it's not really well. They didn't put a lot of love into this plane. <clears throat> That's at least my opinion. Now, if they're going to do updates, I really, really hope they do. Uh, but also at the same time, I I, I, run, I want a developer to put a lot of time in this plane. Uh, B, the B2 that Top Mock Studio is doing, they, they, they put, from what I could tell... The amount of time they've put in that plane, which is over a year now, I that thing better be, uh, has to be like perfect. They did a great job with the beat I me mean, uh, the F twenty two, so I'm I, I mean I'm not, I'm sure that they would do they do a good job with the B two, which I'm super excited to get my hands on. It's due to come out very very soon. All right, let's go on the runway. Zero, one right. Hope this is a long enough runway. All right. Let's get down on the ground here and take off. There's your afterburners. Really don't see a lot of it. The flames need to be a lot bigger. But yeah, and, and in here, you can't even hear. You can barely hear any ambient air outside gears up Flaps up. There we go. Flaps are up. All right. Let's go ahead and retract the wings a little bit. But yeah, she's not bad flying. There's just a little bit of love that needs to be done to this thing. You know what I realized? I didn't even turn my generators on. It almost doesn't even matter to have these on because it didn't even prevent me from starting the engines. But yeah, this thing can climb fast too. We're already passing over almost 6,000 feet. Fully putting the wings back now. Oh, we forgot to put the pedo light, uh, heat on. That is over here. Somewhere. There it is, right there. So that's also another thing that's bad about this plane. 
They're very little interactive. Very few interactive controls. I believe that is the rate of climb. Let's go ahead and drop it right there. Yeah, so use a turn on that, it goes away. Yeah, I'm still trying to learn this. But we're already passing about four, almost 14,000 feet. All of this is a working, uh, working dials. All the dials really do work. It, it's just, it's a very basic loadout on this thing. Let's back off the throttle. But yeah, it's a, it's a subsonic. Really, though, I mean, it, they really need to make this a, a supersonic in, for the sim. Don't know why they didn't. Of course, I'm not them, so I can't answer that. But other than that, it's not it's not horrible. At a scale one being absolutely like... Okay, here you go. This is a good one. On a scale of one to ten, one being M, M, scenery, uh, M Scenery's planes and ten being... PMDG quality. Uh, I would put this at a. Uh, I, I'd say a solid, solid five. I would say a five. Yeah, I like my analogy on that. That that was kind of spot on, because MS Scenery puts out some of the garbage. Straight garbage. So we may do, if I can figure out the autopilot, I may do live streams. Also, if you haven't already uh, subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button as well. It really helps me out uh, and helps the community out in the channel and so on. Uh, we do go, we do do live streams on the channel. Uh, I welcome anyone that wants to come in and join on the live streams. It is always a good time. I have several people that like to join me on flights. I always welcome that. Especially if you guys like fighters. Having escorts, like with escorts with like the bombers. Yeah, that'd be fun. I have a few projects I'm trying to work on as well. Uh, updating trying to stand out from other channels on like on my videos so these videos will evolve yeah I wish when you put the afterburners on like that that it the audio of the plane changes it doesn't though Oh, I noticed that. Oh, if I go to the indentation, it actually is not as fast. Okay. There's something wrong with my, my throttle. Now she's really scooting right now. We're passing right now above 27, almost 27,000 feet or actually 28,000 feet. God, we are probably way off from Joint Base Andrews. But yeah, that's the overview, in my overall opinion, 
of the B1 from Vertavia. Now, I've never heard of that developer. So if anyone has any information on them, on a, if they're actually done good quality stuff in the past, let me know. Look at those clouds in the distance. But yeah, I hope everyone enjoyed themselves. See you in the next video.